So I'm Josh Boyer. I'm the head of the user experience department at NC State Libraries. And uh, I am going to um, tell you about a new library that we built and then um, show you that uh, the visualization spaces in the library and our makerspace have led us to new interesting teaching opportunities. So first, let me just show you the new library. Um, this is the Hunt Library. Um, this is what uh, Paul Pfeiffer, keynote, described as the spaceship that landed in our campus. Um, the, so we now have two main libraries. Um, and this is the spaceship. The other one is the old library that still has books. <laughs> um, actually, we do have books at the Hunt Library. When you, when you walk in the door, um, this is what you're greeted with right away. Um, this is, we call it our BookBot. It is the automated storage and retrieval system where we have about a third of the libraries, the library networks um, collections. This is because Hunt Library is, is located near the College of Engineering. Um, this is mostly engineering as well as textiles. Um, so when you compact the books in this way, the rest of the library ends up um, featuring a lot of open spaces. We have room for, um, in the old library, we had room for 17 group study rooms. In this library, we have room for 68. And that's apparently still not enough. I don't know what number is enough. Um, <laughs> we have music rooms. We have two production studios, mostly for video. And um, so now I want to um, show you the visualization spaces. We have. Uh, like this library has, and like the student union next door has, we have sort of public video walls. And then um, I'm going to walk you through three different rooms that, um, so rooms that are reservable, um, mostly by faculty, um, that have some visualization um, features. This is the Creativity Studio, and this is the Teaching and Visualization Lab. And so, um, what you can sort of see is that there are two walls. There's uh, one on that side and the, the wall behind the speaker. And then out of the picture is a third wall. So this is 270 degrees around the room. Um, the screen is seven feet tall and 70 feet wide. And so um, the first thing I want to tell you about that the, that teaching and visualization lab led to in terms of um, teaching uh, opportunities was uh, a year ago, a conference of civil engineers um, came and they um, saw the teaching and visualization lab. And so a combination of professors and a uh, civil engineering firm in Florida called RS and H um, decided that the wall in uh, the, the big screen would be great to show the graduate students attending the conference what 21st century civil engineering looks like. And so what they did, we're going to see, we're going to find out two things now. We're going to find out if the video plays and how loud it is. So bear with me. Whoops, that's the wrong one. OK. So they, before I started, I'll just tell you about it a little bit. They used the Unity video game engine to mock up uh, what their client, which, is, which I believe is the state of Florida, um, wanted to see in terms of a, bri a bridge that needed to be built and a highway that needed to be built. And so the, the firm was showing the engineers, this is how you do it. You don't present people with maps. You, with paper maps, you do it like this. This is a proposal for Jacksonville, Florida. And this is this is where you can start to see that oh, it's a video game. So uh, this goes on for a while, but I am not going to let it. Um, I'm going to tell you about the, the second um, use of this room that was interesting. 
um, a landscape architecture professor brought her graduate students in to um, the lab and they were using City Engine, which is um, soft 3D software for urban planning. And so they got to use um, City Engine, which they normally use on a screen about this size, on an enormous screen. And so they did that for three or four days and then they, um, then the professor assigned them to each of them, each of the 15 of them, to make a presentation on the wall as well, based on what they had been doing with City Engine. And so um, this, is, this is one of the presentations, and it is typical of all 15. Um, and the audio is irrelevant here. So what, this is the student presenting. She's standing. Um, the video quality is terrible here. This is from my phone. Um, she, what she's done and what they all did was they all put all of their content on the wall at once. And so nearly all of their presentations had that format and I describe it as the walking presentation because they all walked the room. They put all their slides up and walked. So it's as if in this room, instead of doing what I'm doing now, which is going linearly through a bunch of slides on this screen, if instead in this room, if you see these pictures here on the wall, if, that, if those were my slides and I just started at the back of the room and walked around the room and showed you each, showed you my content. And so if you wanted to skip ahead to the end, you could just turn your eyes and, and see. So that was an interesting class. And there have been several that have done um, similar things in the room. This is um, another use of the same lab. This is uh, Dr. Mitosova. Um, from Marine Earth and Atmospheric Sciences. She has um, just enormous amounts of data and her own uh, custom-built software called GRASS that um, she uses on a regular basis in her lab. And they actually do have big screens in her lab, but not quite this big. So she and her graduate students have come over several times and they're scheduled to come more this fall um, to look at their uh, geospatial data on the very big screen. Wanna, um, here and then later in the presentation, I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, these kinds of interactions in the spaces um, are not simple. They don't just, you know, it's not just, yeah, come in at 3.30, that'll work. Um, it's, very, it's very involved. It, you know, Karen Chaconi, my colleague, um, you know, sh she arranges to have their software installed on the server and books time in the lab and figures out you know what um, what options are needed so all of this is a bunch of real work done by real people um, especially Karen the third um, visualization room that we have at hunt library is the game lab which normally um, is for recreational gaming and for uh, game design um, that our computer scientists and design students do um, but um, my colleague Jason Evans Groth and um, a film studies professor took a look at this screen and said, oh, there's something else we can do with this room, which is um, Dr. Marsha Gordon wanted to make a multimedia assignment. And so, um, so she and, and Jason thought it over and decided that what the students could do in this film studies course where they were studying documentaries was make an exhibit using the um, war documentaries they were studying. And so this, this became an exhibit uh, in the game lab uh, in April of this year and looked like this. Um, so this is a touch, this is a large touch screen. And so exhibit goers could come in, choose, I'll go to the next slide so you can kind of see what the choices are. You could choose World War II and then you'd be, then you see a range of films and you could choose them and it would play and then there would be a little bit of textual analysis off to the side. And so this is what the students uh, as a class worked on together. And so that was a, a non-obvious use of what we call a game lab. And credit to my colleague Jason. Do you know Jason? Yes. Oh, excellent. He used to be at Indiana. Yeah, oh, yes. Jason is um, literally, literally our rock star. Um, so now I want to talk about the makerspace. Um, this is our makerspace. How many of you went to the ThinkBox today? Yeah, um, this is not the ThinkBox. <laughs> this is a storage closet. Um, and, um, 
The reason, let me tell you first why we have a makerspace. Um, we have a makerspace because we don't have a think box on our campus. Um, the thing that I was most impressed with about the think box on our tour today was regular hours, access by anybody. I mean, those, those two things right there are just, just mind blowing. At NC State, um, so let me tell you what we have in the makerspace. We have some 3D printers, a laser cutter, and some scanners, um, 3D scanners. Um, other places at NC State have these. In fact, not only do they have these, they have, there's a, industrial engineering has a titanium printer. Um, so there are resources on campus, but they are all prescribed by, well, you gotta be in that program, you gotta know that guy, um, who, the graduate student who has the keys to the room. Um, there are no regular hours. So we, the library, that's our job. We, we know how to do access and um, program hours. So. So we, we dabble in the makerspace, and much like this library does, I love what's going on down there where they're, they have a 3D printer, but they're, they're telling you, go to the think box if, if, if you're serious about that. This is what we do as well. We will, we will help you with some stuff, but, um, but if you're, you know, you will graduate from us quickly, and we, we tell you about other campus resources. Um, engineering senior design is our bread and butter. This is a bike mounted, environmental sensor, the white parts were 3D printed, and this is, the engineers are, this is our bread and butter. Um, Adam Rogers is the head of our makerspace program, and um, Adam had an interesting idea to go into electrical and computer engineering at the beginning of last year and pitch a project to the senior design, the folks choosing their senior design projects. And so Adam stands at the front of the room along with Lenovo and Cisco and all these other people pitching projects for the engineers to get involved in. And so Adam um, pitched to them, build your own 3D scanner. And Adam imagined that what they were gonna do would be a scanner that would probably fit on this podium. That is not what they did. They built something a little bit different. 3D printed cast for that. Mm -hmm. right, so you just walk up to the booth and you're presented with an instruction screen. So you read through all those, there's a big ready button. You click on it and it tells you to uh, step on the platform. Wait here, you've got 10 seconds to strike a pose or whatever, and then you start spinning and uh, the cameras will collect the data and create a 3D model of you. We built this for our senior design class for electrical computer engineering. Um, our first semester was basically just the planning phase. We, uh, you know, make sure we had all the resources we needed and um, planned out how we were going to do it. And then we spent the second semester building it. But the second semester, we teamed up with some industrial design students to uh, do all the aesthetics. It's just something that's new. It's cutting edge. It's, um, you know, ten years ago, this wasn't really a thing. So it's just really exciting to be able to be on the cutting edge of technology. <laughs> So that was the little scanner that they made. Um, we, as part of our makerspace program, we check out electronics kits, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, and Makey Makeys. And um, I was mentioning that, so engineering is our bread and butter, um, but we're delighted to be able to say that um, we've expanded out from engineering, uh, which is definitely a goal. And so this is a picture from a video. Um, and what this was, was, this is a class in communication, communication and technology, an undergraduate class. And so Dr. Nick Taylor and my colleague Brendan O'Connell worked together to come up with an assignment using the Makey Makeys. And so what um, the assignment was to create an interface using a brand new interf novel interface using the Makey Makey and then to make a video about your interface and describe it, describe your process, your product, you're thinking, relate uh, what you're doing to the course readings. And so this student, um, what she's done is she's using the flowers and the alligator clips and wires and making, making, she's made a keyboard. Um, when, she pre when she touches the, the pedals, uh, she plays a little song. And so that, that was from her video. Um, and what, from Brendan's and my perspective, um, the, the important thing here is that Dr. Taylor could could come up with an assignment like this, and the part that we can take care of is we can lend the Makey Makeys. We can teach workshops on how to do this. And so the, some of the technology piece, Dr. Taylor doesn't have to worry about, that's our job. This is Brendan, who I believe is helping Dr. Fife make a steampunk telegraph. Excellent, 
because, you know, library. Um, my final example is this is a civil engineering professor, Dr. Bastian Schroeder. Uh, this is his teaching tool that he 3D printed. Um, this is a roundabout. And um, the, uh, whatever, whatever most of us think about roundabouts, um, what Dr. Schroeder tells me is that blind pedestrians have quite a time with roundabouts. And so if you see those little dots, that's for, that's for someone to, that's his teaching tool to hand to someone who's visually disabled and show them how roundabouts work as pedestrians. Our makerspace um, program in our, uh, what was designed to be a storage closet has um, been a success. And so we have an opportunity in the uh, other main library to expand and to, um, to have a real size makerspace. Nothing nearly as amazing as the Think Box, but we're very proud of it. So thank you for listening.